Okay, it is that time. Start our time, end our time, right? Everybody's either grabbing a beer or a seat, possibly both, which I like. I am Allie, I am your MC for tonight. So welcome to Atlanta Startup Village, number, I think, 56, which is kind of awesome. Somebody just got real excited about 56 in the corner. I appreciate this. <laughs> we are the largest monthly meetup of entrepreneurs in the Southeast, so you are in good company, welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, you can follow along at the conversation at hashtag ATLSV on Twitter at ATLSV or on Instagram at ATL Startup Village because somebody else already had ATLSV and they're not doing anything with it, but they won't give it to me. It's sad. All right, so who here has a beer tonight that you were super excited about? Woo! That is not a lot of enthusiasm for beer. Come on, come on. All right, the beer is sponsored by the fantastic sponsor tonight, Jen with ATDC is gonna tell you more about it. Welcome, Jen. Thank you, good evening. So how many people know what ATDC is? All right, this is why we do this, because every time I come here, half the people don't know what we are. So we are the Advanced Technology Development Center, ATDC. We are Georgia's technology incubator. So we are here in the state of Georgia to help entrepreneurs in the technology space learn, launch, scale, and succeed. We have uh, six different educational curriculums for different types of technology entrepreneurs, and our programs run uh, every day. So we typically have about 58 different classes and social events a month in Midtown, as well as in 11 locations across the state. Um, so we're trying to actually serve the entire state. I am not here to talk at length about ATDC tonight because we've got some really big events and some really exciting news to share with you. Um, but there's uh, six or seven staff members and coaches, people that are serial entrepreneurs that coach entrepreneurs for a living over by the beer, so go talk to them. Uh, tonight, I want to talk to you about Tech Square, which is the week of May 7th through 10th. And we have planned a week-long celebration of all things Tech Square, which is in Midtown Atlanta. And it kicks off on that Monday with FinTech South and a party and Atlanta Startup Battle on the Tuesday night. And on Wednesday, we've got a bunch of events related to retail technology and innovation at Georgia Tech. And then our annual showcase is on that 10th, right? the ATDC Startup Showcase. And we will highlight about 120 of our incubator companies. We currently have about 170, so it's a little crazy. We'll have 10 fast pitches and about six or seven companies graduate. And this is an annual celebration. We expanded it this year to include the whole week because our goal is to drive more out of town investors to come to town to meet with amazing startups here in the state of Georgia. And so uh, last year we had about 30 out of town investors from Silicon Valley come. This year we're shooting for over 50. And it's really an opportunity for startups to showcase and be seen by folks in the corporate innovation space as far as being customers and or investors. And if you want to learn more, just come see us later. We'll probably have to sneak outside and talk because otherwise I'll get yelled at all night long. So turn it back over. Yeah. Round of applause for ATC. Okay. She's not wrong. This is a very echoey space. So if you're in the back having a conversation, we can hear you. Please be respectful of the presenters. Thanks, y'all. All right. T kicking us off tonight, our number one presenter, Toss. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Allie. All right, my name is Marissa Swanson. I'm the CEO and founder of Toss. Okay, so everyone in this room, how many of you left your home today wearing some form of clothing? Okay. Some people don't raise their hands. Are you naked back there? Okay, this is a little bit awkward. Um, so excluding those of you that wear a daily uniform, how many of you know exactly what you're going to wear the minute you wake up every morning? Okay, well, I'm envious of your efficiencies every morning, so. <laughs> For the rest of us, um, we are solving the daily problem of what to wear every day. So for whether that's going to work every day or grabbing brunch with your friends, the majority of us want to be the best dressed versions of ourselves because when you don't look your best, you don't feel your best. We have built an app that leverages that, that solves that problem. 
So we leverage what's already in your wardrobe. You have a digital version of your closet on the app. And every day you put in the parameters of what you're doing, the weather, what the weather is like outside, the dress code, and your mood. And so we'll give you a complete ensemble from there. And the more, sorry, the more you interact with the app, the better it gets. So we use machine learning to go off of previous successful outfits, and um, the more user input we get from you, the better we understand your preferences for brand, style, fabric, the list goes on. So everyone's first question is, how do I get my entire wardrobe on here? Do I take photos and manually upload them? Absolutely not, that would take forever. So um, within our network, we have great retailers that have given us access to all of their products. So from there, we have built out an extensive backend database of everything fashion. So the first time you log on as a new user, you go through the onboarding process of creating what is a capsule wardrobe. Um, so you select items that are very specific or similar to what you own. So a pair of blue skinny jeans, a black blazer, uh, brown boots, and create that capsule wardrobe to get started. In 2016, there were $63.3 billion spent on retail e-commerce, and that number is expected to grow to 90 billion by 2021. With 58% of those purchases made by women, and then of those purchases, there's 22.1 million millennial women in the United States. They are the largest generation of influencers when it comes to fashion, and as they begin to enter the peak consumption age, they'll be buying more than any other generation. We are targeting this niche group because of their retail savviness and their strong online presence. So going into this, uh, we are launching our beta this week. So we would love for all of you Apple users, sorry Android, um, to be a part of our beta test. So go to our website at www and sign up. Also follow us on Instagram, please. And I'm gonna do a live demo, hopefully this goes well, so bear with me for a second as I pull it up. Yeah, right, first first live demo. Call me. No pressure. No pressure. This is why we tested this ahead of time and it worked, and of course. So why Mar while Marissa <laughs> works on getting this up and running, this is why we do live demos. This is why it's important to test your pitch in front of a much more warm and friendly audience like this and not just investors. So um, if you are interested in pitching here, uh, we have three criteria. You're based in Atlanta. You are a startup. And you have something that you can demo for about four minutes. So come talk to me after, and we can talk about where you fit in and what we have coming up. We do skip May. I know it's sad. Memorial Day. Um, but we will have one up in April and starting back up again in June. So come chat with me after and we'll see where we can fit you in. Um, and for those of you who we're going to have um, volunteers in between the pitches and they actually set up and take down all of these chairs for y'all and then they get 30 seconds in between. So if you don't fit the criteria for a startup pitch or it's a little ways out, maybe you have an idea and you're not quite there yet, you can come chat with me after as well. I'm going to pretend like that didn't happen. You can come chat with me after as well, and we can get you queued up for the volunteer pitches. The only thing you pay is with some little free time and labor, setting up and taking back down. Are we, oh, all right. Well, we're so. going to go into Q&A. <laughs> we're we going to give a round of applause uh, for Marissa for taking <laughs> us in stride. So, I told, I told a couple of people, I actually watched uh, Dropbox's 2008 demo, and they completely bombed it. I'm like, I'm going to watch this, and this isn't going to happen to me, and it happened. So, um, you're just going to send a few the beta tester, and you'll be able to see it. All right, so first question. Right. Are you only targeting women, or have, um, can I upload my clothes as well? Okay, so the question is, are you only targeting women, and can you upload the clothes with your men? 
Uh, right now we are, since we're just in our beta, we're focusing on women and um, considering the database is very extensive to upload with women, what we do in on the platform in the future. Okay, so the question was, how are you generating revenue um, for our first beta of acquiring a lot of data, so it's going to be free, but from there, um, based off of our extensive um, AI algorithm behind it, we'll be charging a monthly subscription fee of $9.99 a month. The free version will still allow you to create a online database of everything in your wardrobe and you can manually put together clothes with that instantaneous suggestion of outfits will be part of the premium version. So the question was, how do I incorporate men? So um, <laughs> through, through that, um, we can we have our affiliate network that has also men clothing on there. So it's a matter of applying the same principles to the algorithm for picking outfits for women. We just, I mean, I guess depending on how the trends change, you might have skirts and dresses for men in the future. But for now, it'll be a little simpler for just tops and bottoms. But okay, yes. Okay, so the question was, have I considered allowing people to sell clothes through the platform after, afterwards? Okay. Um, we have actually thought about connecting to sites such as Polyvore, excuse me, Poshmark, and through there being able to link your account directly so you can automatically upload and leverage their network through um, how, they, how they sell through that platform. Yes. The question is, is this your existing wardrobe? Yes, so when you're onboarded, you go through picking items that are similar to what you own, like a pair of blue skinny jeans, a white blazer, nude pups. And from there, you can go in and search by keyword and add more specific items. So you wanna search for a specific brand, find that exact uh, Karen Millen dress that you own, uploaded it so it's through there. So all items are tagged by their color, by their season, by their dress code. So it uses what you already own. Through the app, um, we suggest things to complete your look, whether that's like jewelry or a scarf or some sort of accessory. Yes. Can you ask the women in the audience to raise their hand if this solves a real problem for them? Okay, the question was, can the women in this audience raise their hand if this solves a real problem for them? Okay, only two women didn't raise their hand. All right, okay. <laughs> Next question. Yes. <clears throat> The question is, what, are, what is the AI I'm using? And the second question is, would I be selling the information? So uh, we're working, we've been talking with the group um, at ATDC. Shout out, uh, Cognitive is our AI group. So they're in charge of pulling all the data from our beta test. So we're, of the outfits we suggest to you, if you do not like it at all, maybe you save it later, and what you choose to wear that day, that applies into sort of the hot or not, and how we actually learn what outfit works perfect for you when you're going to work, and that what's the weather was like that day, and that sort of teaches the machine how um, to pull it through. And then if we are selling the data, no, we do not plan on that right now. Yes. The question was, how much funding have I gotten? What are the sources, and what is the background? My background. Okay. Um, it has been completely bootstrapped. I have gotten some money from my parents to help me. Um, so thank you. My mom's actually in the audience. So. Um, my background is in architecture. So um, a lot of this came from, um, I do a lot of parametric modeling and 3D modeling. And so writing conditional formulas for a fake 3D building and 3D objects. I was like, why can't I apply this to fashion? So it's a good start. Yes. When the app makes a suggestion, does it link to a retail site? Yes, it does. So I would have been able to show that in the demo. Um, so like I said, um, we suggest things that complete your look. And if there's a, a set of earrings or something you like in that outfit that we show, that um, you can click on that image and click shop now. It'll take you directly to that retailer's website, directly to that item. Yes. The question was, what if you have a bad sense of fashion? Well, this is supposed to help you. So this is perfect for you. Um, you start off with like staple items that are really easy to style. And with those suggested items to complete your look, that will create you a little more fashionable, help you a little more fashionable. Good? Great. Yep. Okay. Good time. I'm going to also 
also like to point out that Marissa is in the just over a year I've been doing this, the very first presenter who has not had to be asked to repeat the question. She did every single one. Of them. That props to that. All right. So our volunteers, as mentioned, we have in between. We've got two here. First up, Dante. Come on down. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me in the back? My name is Dante Atkinson. My name is Dante Atkinson. I'm from a wonderful organization called Georgia Football Officials Association. How many of you guys like the sport of football? And that's foot F O O T. Good. How many of you guys play football? Cheerleader had a kid that played football, or whatever the case may be, that's relative to football. Great. Well, you're going to love this information. I come from an organization where the founder, George C. Garner, the late George C. Garner, implemented some of the mechanics that you see in NCAA and also in the NFL. Well, I'm here today to make a pitch to you guys to offer you not only the brotherhood, and yes, we do have females in our organization, and offer you a source of fitness and also knowledge transfer for the world ever-changing football. Guys, we do high school officiating, and we're also we're looking for male and female officials to come out in our organization. So my appeal to you is if you want to stay connected to the game that we love so much, we offer you, we want you, and we would love to invite you to join our organization at Georgia Football Association. Okay? That's GFOA. And our website is GFOA.pro. Robert? Awesome. Thank you. I'm with the organization as well. And uh, who does uh, LA Fitness or anything of that nature? Anybody pay somebody for you to get fit? Here's an opportunity to get paid to be fit. And while you're not going to make millions, but what it will do is it allow you to clear your mind, be ready for uh, that big promotion or that big uh, uh, presentation. And it allows you to uh, do something, give back to the, uh, the young kids whether it be youth football all the way up to varsity football, and then you get to see them go through youth into varsity, and then all of a sudden you see them on TV, and then they're in the NFL, and you're like, man, I helped that person. So help and be involved. Thank you. Clever use of back-to-back -back volunteers there. Um, you can find their information in the back on the wall. Are we ready to go? All right, second presenter up. Welcome, good time. Thank you, I appreciate it. That was sad. Round of applause, guys. Come on. Yeah. Awesome. So we are here to talk about good time. Um, my name is Vic Devon. I am uh, co-founder and uh, CEO of, of this company. Um, so all of us enjoy spending time with the people we care for. And that includes our family members, our friends, our coworkers, our peers. We do, go, we do things with them, we go places, we enjoy food and drinks, we go sometimes, sometimes. Um, and even if it's just walk in the park. Now this statement you see there, I mean, it's very popular on the internet. I don't know if Einstein said it or not, but Facebook just proved it. So, <laughs> who goes to them? <laughs> so, there is an interesting uh, situation. Even though most of us want to have good time with our peers, there are only a few of us who really enjoy is the planning and preparation of that getting together or meet up. So for example, one of the big challenge I face is agreeing on a place to go. And there are many reasons for that. I mean, um, decision fatigue is one of them. Um, and I won't go into the details for other reasons. And I'm sure you all have your own reasons why you hate to plan things. Um, um, raise your hand if you, if you face the same challenge to agree to a place to go when you're trying to get out with your friends or coworkers and stuff. Yeah, it's an interesting problem, very ironic. Um, now, now, the question is, we are all surrounded by, by the cool technology. We hear it every month here and all around us. Can it help us solve this problem? And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. It can solve some of our challenges today, and over time, it can become that perfect assistant which we grew up watching in sci-fi movies. 
Now, what should a simple product look, look like to solve this problem? First, it has to be a quick setup. And we should be able to plan our get together within less than a minute, maybe. And communicate with the people who we are getting together with if you want to. And also, to be informed instead of wondering where they are. So, also we have to make sure that it's all done in a fun uh, user experience. So that's uh, what Good Time is all about, and we're gonna do a live demo for you guys, crossing fingers, <laughs> let's see if it works, <laughs> where we will uh, we'll play around how this works. Um, so let me switch the screens real quick. This phone cooperates. Oh. All right, it works. Hey. You guys see my phone, right? Perfect. So the first thing you do is I, Sorry, thank you. <laughs> First thing we do is we go near the app store. So I use Apple. So you go on iPhone, you type the first link after the promotional thing Apple does, which is a restaurant, lousy name for a restaurant. Who names the restaurant good time? But anyways, uh, so you go in there, you download the app, and once you are there, uh, it, uh, once you download, it starts this way. It gives you a brief introduction, what this app does, and, and stuff. It, you have to have really good eyesight to read it. We're working on it. <laughs> uh, but then once you're done with that, uh, you go into the registration, and you uh, submit your phone number. Please don't call me. <laughs> Especially screaming the how stupid the presentation was, but that's okay. And you get an OTP code, which we all know, one-time password, 719365, I think. You put in there. Oh, perfect, perfect. Because I was previously registered, I just wanted to show you the process. It pulls down all my information, closing my picture, and it goes in there, it asks what nickname I want, and it gets uh, a basic list of interests I like, and we have a collection of thousands and thousands of interests humans have, humans have, um, in our database, so it randomly picks which interests out there. So in this one, uh, tea drinking, jewelry making, which I have no idea, and <laughs> calligraphy, I think, well, uh, and, and boom, boom records, yeah, I like boom records, yeah. So uh, you can select or don't select whatever uh, you like, and then you select in there, and this is your home page looks like. So, um, uh, on this main screen, you can go create an event, look at your invites, do a buzz and chat, and a bunch of more things. So I will walk you through with a... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do a QA. and I mean, you can download the app. It's very intuitive. Um, it's an eight-year-old proof app where um, my eight-year-old daughter plays around with it and figured out how it works. So I hope you all download and figure it out. With that, I'm, I'm ready for your questions. Yes, please. So, have the time to certain sexual connotation? Have you thought of that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the question was that uh, have a good time, have a sexual connotation to it, and, and do we have a problem with that? And, and my answer was absolutely no. <laughs> Next question. Go ahead. So if someone, one of my friends has an app that I don't, and I want to coordinate with them, do I have to download the app too, or is there a way of interacting with them? Sorry, say again? Is there a way of interacting with the app if I don't have the app myself, my friend does? Yes, so what we do is, if you don't have an app, uh, so the question is, do, they, do we have a way to interact with your friend if you don't have an app and your friend does, or vice versa? And the answer is yes. So what we do is, if you have an app and your friends don't, and you're trying to invite your friend to a party, it sends them a text message, message with a short link. They can click on that short link and follow all the functionalities to get to this place, off secure place which you picked to, to hang out. And it tells them how to get there as well. But if they download the app, they have, uh, they have uh, more robust communication with you and stuff like that. Thank you, great question. Yes, please, in the back. Uh, what are your revenue streams and how many users do you have? Perfect. So the question is, what's the revenue stream and how many users we have? Well, the, 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 first, the, second, the first question is, is, we don't know yet. So, and the reason why we say that is that based on the product, we are, the platform we have built, uh, at the core, what it means is it's a, it's a technology 
to bring people together at a place for a purpose. And you can apply it to any use case out there in there. And I mean, I have a bunch of slides I can show you about, but you can imagine a physician's visit. You can imagine a barber shop. You can imagine the people who train you for karate and, and martial arts. Anybody who organized these things, or, or your gym coaches, or your coaches, they can all use it. Now, how many users we have? So this is a interesting thing I will show you on our website. You can go up there and see. Uh, at the bottom of it, we have this world map, which shows there is if there is any good time event scheduled anywhere in the world, it drops a pin there. So this is our coverage right now. You see that these are the these many good time events are scheduled all over the world, and we just launched in January, in the middle of January. So this is, uh, I mean, we have a couple of iterations out in the market, and the next one is coming out uh, in a couple of weeks. But we have these many users who have a good time schedule. Once your time is up and your good time is over, the pin goes away. <laughs> Make sense? Right. So, will you eventually make profit of the places that the app suggests to people as a almost advertisement to the places? So that's an interesting business model, uh, which we have. Uh, sorry, the question is: Will we make money off of people or organizing or places who uh, people use to hang out with or have a good time at? And, uh, and the answer is yes, that's a potential business model. Uh, as long as it fits into our constraints, which is 100% uh, privacy, so we will never share the information about our community members to these places. Uh, we will never let them directly advertise those places, and the benefits have to be tangible. It can't be that come tomorrow and I'll give you $2 off. That things doesn't work. Yeah. And, and uh, so yeah, that's a potential business model. There's one in the back, sir. Yes, that's not the only competitor. So the question is, uh, the meetup is one of our competitor, uh, I mean, uh, uh, rightfully so. And how are we going to deal with that? And the answer is that meetup is not the only one our competitor. If you talk about our competition, it varies all the way from Facebook to meetup to uh, 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 Yelp, all those tools all together. The, the advantage we have all, over all of them is they are very good at doing one thing. What we are trying to create is a social platform which can help you do a lot of things together and keep you communica in communication with the people who you are involved with. And it's mobile-based usability. I mean, I haven't, honestly, I, I use Meetup for this event, but I haven't fully figured it out yet. I, I, I mean, I, I, it just works and I just leave it there. Our goal is to make sure that user experience is our primary priority and focus. Thank you. See, that's why I was so excited when Marissa didn't have to repeat any of the questions. Um, also, Meetup works, and I don't know why, but there's 11,000 of y'all on it, so I'm not going to change that. Um, okay, volunteer number three, Carol, come on down. Hi, everyone. I'm Carol Williams with Williams Immigration. It's very own law. So I appreciate uh, people pitching their own businesses up here. Um, I help companies hire foreign nationals and take your business to the next level. So when you find a candidate that's not a US citizen, I'm the person who does all of the immigration visa work for you so that when that person comes on board, they hit the ground running and they're not worried about work authorization and should they be here and can their kids go to school and then what happens to their spouse. So my information's on the back wall and I'll be back there, happy to chat. <laughs> And Yvonne. Thank you so much. I'm Yvonne Gamble, San Pete Financial Group, and we are here to help you. What we are is a commercial lender, and we have a startup division, so that uh, was very innovative because it is very hard sometimes for you to get financing. Our financing floors from 250000 to uh, $20 billion. You all have very good projects. We are located at 200 P Street. We'd love to see you. We'll be out passing our flyers out throughout the evening. Our information is on the board in the back. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you. All right, presenter number three, Alana Athletica. Guys, you are like the least applauding team ever. Hi, everyone. It's very exciting to be here. Um, we, we have
had a aha moment when we realized that the two things that we truly cared about for our company was perhaps the next paradigm shift in the evolution of consumer demand. And we believe this to be social good and transparency. And what I mean by this is there will be a future, this is already happening, but there could be a future where people will base their purchasing decisions more and more on social good and transparency, business transparency. So you know what we care about? Um, what kind of a company are we? What do we make? You all will be highly amused to know that we make the world's greatest yoga pants. That's what we do. We make really good apparel products and we, we make it in the right way using the right ethical manufacturing strategy. And we support women in Sri Lanka, which is where part of our founders are from. And we um, have social impact programs that uh, support education, employment, and empowerment. Transparency is a big piece, uh, so I'm going to talk majority of my time, I'm going to talk about transparency and how we are approaching this problem. Um, for example, um, I'm going to talk about the mechanics of our impact dashboard that will be available on our website, and let me introduce you to Jane. Jane is a 21-year-old freelance writer, she's, she, yeah, she's a freelance writer, she uh, cares about her environment and she's currently in the market for a uh, yoga pan. She is highly intrigued by our claims to be socially responsible, so she goes ahead and buys an empowerment pan which directly sponsors self-defense classes for servant abuse survivors in Sri Lanka. As soon as she makes this purchase, her impact dashboard on the Alana website is updated and is the of the humanitarian organization that we partnered with who will be now responsible to uh, carry out or hold the self-defense class in Sri Lanka. A portal is opened and information flows both ways. Four weeks later, Jane's notified that the self-defense class that she's enabling will be held on a Wednesday, and she gets a direct live link to not only attend, but also participate this, in this class. Jane's never experienced something like this before, some, a customer experience like this before. She's highly, highly happy, highly intrigued, and she continues to purchase another pen from our website, this time an education pen. Jane tells her friends, who in turn tells their friends, and this interactive impact dashboard gets updated and she has access to stories, blogs, uh, videos of all of the impact moments that her network is creating in Sri Lanka and hopefully one day all across the world. So, <laughs> yeah. What's cool about this is that even though Jane's kind of poor and she can only afford two yoga pants a year, she keeps coming back to the website to to check on what her community and her network is creating. So she is engaged with us, even though she's not buying any pants or tops. Hopefully, two years later, when she's back in the market to buy a top or a yoga pants, I think it's safe to say that she might not be look beyond Alana. This is our goal. Um, and perhaps this is the ultimate form of brand loyalty and the ultimate form of customer lifetime value, in our, in, our, in our opinion. This is our goal. So what I've just explained to you, if transparency is a big differentiator for us, what I've just explained to you is just one form of transparency, and we need to recognize this. Our commitment is to look into all kinds of transparency that consumers will demand in the future. And there are three buckets that all types of transparency will fall into, and we will build the technology to satisfy that consumer demand in the future. So this is the most important slide, so if there's anything that you're going to remember us by, hopefully it is this. We don't want to be remembered or recognized as just a yoga pan company. That is not our goal. If we are able to create the same customer experience that Jane experienced, and we are able to do this, consistently across value, social impact, and transparency, and use technology as the driver or the enabler, we believe that we will be able to offer 
a superior and compelling value proposition that is unmatched in the market. This is our goal. Any questions? Yes, sir. Are you planning on organizing as a benefit corporation? Uh, no. So, yeah, the question is if we, <laughs> you mean a non profit? No, no. So, Correct. The question is whether we will ever be a B Corp. The answer is no. We are going to operate as a non profit, and hopefully, one day. All of our social impact programs will have its own arm to uh, own B Corp arm to execute on, maybe. Yes. So, what kind of tools do you have for brands to tell their story? Like you, you spoke about how somebody would go and buy other brands in the social aspect for the consumer, but what's going to make that consumer choose a specific brand? Do you have any brands signed up? This is our brand. We make our own yoga pants. Right. We will make our own active wear. So not only um, so this is their client at Tech Village. If I pitch this somewhere else, the problem that I'm hopefully trying to solve would be a little different. So we heavily emphasized on the technology aspect of our company. Right. And then I guess the question changes: Do you ever plan to partner with uh, socially aware brands? Do we ever plan to partner with socially aware brands? No. This we, we do not because. Our company is our own brand. Oh, that's our B2B partners. So, for ex yeah, sorry. Uh, what does onboarding retailers mean? So, we make our own brand, we make our own products. Part of our strategy for selling is B2C, which is our e commerce platform. And a big part of uh, growth for us would be B2B and retailers and small boutiques and so on. So, same brand, our Alana brand. Alana Athletica is our brand. Correct, that is B2C e commerce. Um, but another big selling avenue for us would be B2B or retailers and wholesalers and so on. Yes. Okay, so we've been at this for a year. The question is how much of revenue have you generated so far, correct? So we've been at this for a year. We launched Kickstarter um, in May. We raised $55,000 with a proof of concept. We made the product, we branded ourselves. In January, we launched our website with zero injection in marketing for a number of reasons. In two months, we've generated $10,000 in revenue um, so far. Yeah, so the question is, got it, Ali. Um, the question is, I think what you're trying to say is, Lululemon could easily displace us with our value proposition. And I'll tell you why it's very, very difficult. Um, this value proposition, us being built on transparency and social impact. Social impact is easy. You know, everyone can have a social impact arm. But building a transparency platform to provide the level of transparency, like we are even talking about supply chain transparency, salary transparency, gender, dif gender distribution transparency, raw material transparency. Companies who are big, who are never founded on this principle, will find it an enormous challenge to aggregate the data, to find the data, to go into their ERP systems, to figure out how to provide that transparency. So, we ask Apple for material sourcing transparency and that level of information, they, will, they work with thousands and thousands of vendors. Their ERP systems will be very difficult to manipulate and figure out to provide that level of information. That's the advantage that we have. 
So if we are competing against Lululemon on transparency and providing that to consumers, we have an advantage because we are starting out small and our company will be built on that. woefully under my yoga pant quota for the year, so I guess I either need to buy more or less. Um, I know, right? Two for you. Um, all right, volunteer number five, Henry, come on down. Hey, everybody. My name is Henry McAlvin. I am vice president of sales for a company called Pursuant Health. And we're a consumer health care engagement company, and we contract with major health plans um, for our software solution. So just last year, we raised a $12.8 million Series A round of financing. And uh, kind of from the perspective, our, our easy foot in the door is that we've got next generation self-service health kiosks currently located within 10 miles of 80% of the US population. And so just last year, we did over 40 million health screenings. Um, we're already contracted with four of the 10 largest health plans in the country, including Walmart as well and CVS um, on the retail side of it. And we're currently hiring for our first entry level sales position. So my information's on the back. And please contact me if you're interested. Woo! 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 <laughs> and Sean, I like your shirt, Sean. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? So my name is Sean Johnson. And I am from a company called Mobile App Hero. And I'm, I started my company because creating apps is way harder than it should be. I witnessed so many people struggle to get their app created. Can you raise your hand if you have an app idea. A lot of people have an app idea. It shouldn't be this complicated. We partner with our clients to bring their apps to life. And we do it in an effective, affordable way. So if you have an app idea, which I know every one of you has an app idea, um, I'll be in the back, we, we can talk. Uh, we've helped a number of startups create their app idea, get funding. We are local, we don't use offshore developers, we actually create new developers in the ecosystem. So we are working with the resources in the ecosystem. Thank you. today, Fender Space. <laughs> so, events suck, or at least that's how I felt after my first festival flopped. After eight years of successfully producing events alongside notable brands like Live Nation, Coca-Cola, and iHeartMedia, I challenged myself to raise the bar and do a festival which would truly test my passion. But between staging, lighting, sound, catering, and a whole list of other needs, the only thing it truly tested was my patience. <laughs> and in that moment, I realized there's a lack of resources for event professionals. Of course, you have Google, but if you don't use the right keywords, you don't find the right people. And then with social media, Scavenging across all these random profiles to find quality professionals gets a little bit too risky for business. And then there's your personal network. That was actually our first option for finding vendors for this specific event. But as our luck would have it, all of our go-to people were busy on this day and we were stuck relying on referrals to strangers we've never even heard of. We wasted so much time and money stalking vendors that it became the downfall of our event and I knew something had to change. My name is Ethi Faby, and I'm the CEO of Vendor Space. Today, event organizers and vendors are scattered across the web, trying to connect between forums, social networks, and frequently Craigslist to fill their needs. Over $151 billion is misused every year on vendor sourcing and management simply because we settle for what we get. With Vendor Space, we redefine the way you book, find, and manage event resources by simplifying the search process. Our dual-sided interactive marketplace helps you find vendors and events near your desired location so we can finally do events a lot easier and faster. So here's a quick little walkthrough of how our platform works. At first, just like any regular website or so, create your profile, register for an account. 
All of our users, they go through a vendor space interview, which is just a couple of questions. This is our vetting process so that we're able to pull the data to get to curate specific results for all of your specific requests. So if you can think back to a time maybe when you were looking for a photographer for $100, or maybe Ali may think about getting a new drink vendor because pregnant people can't drink beer. So things like that, you'd be able to come here and curate. So. <laughs> so, since it's all pre-screened, you'd be able to find vetted event professional in a matter of minutes. So let's say I'm a vendor, I'm looking for an event. I randomly come here, I find that Coachella's coming to Atlanta. And I click on it, and this is what a standard event page would look like. It gives me all the information, it allows me to know the type of vendors that's needed, time, date, location, I can ask a question, and I can also learn about vendors that are already booked on this event. So in case I was wondering whether I'm the right fit, or maybe I just wanna know if I'm in competition with anyone else, I'd be able to go look through a vendor profile and see more. This is a vendor profile, gives you all the same information. You can save, you can contact, you can book. The event gallery supports photos, videos, and sound clips. Sound clips are most often used with our DJs upload mixes and stuff like that. And then you would go to your dashboard. Your dashboard manages all of your event activity, to-do lists. We're also offering stuff like auto suggestions to help you craft the perfect event. But let's say I wanna go back and actually book that booth at Coachella. I would come to my saved events. I would book it through the regular process. And here's what my booking page would look like. In most events, event organizers require you to sign a contract. So you can opt for electronic invoicing and contracts to the platform just so you can you know, conduct your business a lot faster. Once you've completed your booking, all your events and vendors, everyone involved in the event goes to a specific workspace. So this way, rather than going back and forth with emails, you can now come here, share all your announcements, and let's say you, know, you can share your graphics, your profiles, things like that. So like the event that I referenced at the beginning of this presentation, it was on a lot of land that was literally three football fields long. And usually, you don't give vendors walkie-talkies, so the event team had walkie-talkies, but we were literally running back and forth in 90 degree weather to communicate with vendors. So this is something that you would see in our new version that will be released in the next three weeks. And then we're also coming up with the mobile app that will be available for May 1st. Woo! Thank you. So first question was, what's the fee? The fee is, it's actually free to join, and all we do is charge a 8% uh, transaction fee for all bookings on our platform. And then we offer a premium membership for maybe a company like yours if you have multiple users or if you have a need to have uh, user space with multiple users and you want your team on it, then that's where you have just a very minimal monthly fee that kind of allows you to do that. Um, your next question, you might repeat it. Um, the next question was, so I know like Thumbtack, they have like a limit to how many users can actually okay. uh, go to it. So I was like, is there going to be a limit on the amount of vendors? Or is it like, you know, I mean, you can get like 100 DJs. Or right. So there is no limit. Oh, sorry. The question is, is there going to be a limit on how many vendors or so would be able to apply for event? So there is no limit. You can have as many as you want, but because you can curate and kind of get to specific results, although 100 may apply, you can still be able to weed through and see the ones that are still a perfect fit. So it still allows you to get a lot of information where you know maybe 50 of them just isn't worth your time.
well, we w how would we know if you're a legit? The question is, how would we know if you're a legit vendor at Coachella? So that would be on Coachella to do the vetting or to actually do more questioning if they doubt you or feel that you're not up to par. Do you but do we outsource? Well, because we do the pre-screen and because we do that interview process, we're able to weed out the people that may, you know, kind of be fake or, you know, who aren't real. So we do take pride in that and we are very serious about having a verified network. So we would actually make sure everyone is interviewed and we get all the information before you're even able to apply to a Coachella. So some people do get turned away, unfortunately, but it's just because it's for event professionals. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the question was what would we do to kind of keep people from booking outside of the platform, so to speak? Um, we do offer something that's kind of similar to insurance and that's just our vendor space money guarantee. Um, we have we keep our money in escrow, so whether you feel something isn't right, you can always get your money back at any also because you're allowed to do so many different things within the platform, um, that's mainly our biggest perk for you booking through it and then we, um, we get discounts from all of our members. So even when we have something like a Coachella, we, these are people that will be partners with us and that we're able to get special discounts on their booth rates. There's like festivals that we're working with towards the end of the year that we're getting special rates just for vendor space members. So it kind of incentivizes you to stay within the platform and go ahead and book rather than go outside and get the right the price. Yes. The question is, at what point do we find out when the event has been planned? Yeah. Okay, so the event can be planned at any point. You can use vendor space to build it from the ground up. We also have venue profiles, or you can come at a last minute point. That's also common in events where maybe there's a cancellation or so. So you'd be able to use it for a last minute request and still find anyone that you need. Seat check. Hello everyone, my name is Shazi. I'm the co-founder of Seat Check app. Seat Check is a table sharing app that connects people who are sitting in a restaurant, people in the area who are looking to grab a seat without the wait. It eliminates wait time, allows the restaurant to seat more people, and also allows its users to meet new people and socialize. We are live on iOS. Go download Seat Check app. Seat, eat, meet. What's up? I'm Billy Boozer. Uh, nice to meet you guys. Um, so I do a little thing called Coffee Shop Talks where I meet with the leaders of our community, uh, the startup community, uh, the entrepreneurial community, and sit down and just have coffee with them, right? And I film it and then put it on YouTube for everybody to see and have a little bit of production value with it. Um, I'm a software engineer, so I, I, I build things and I like to dissect like how communities and how things work, right? And so without knowing the community leaders that we have in our community, it's very difficult to actually make any decisions or how you get involved with the community. So uh, hopefully you'll go there, youtube.com slash Billy Boozer, and it's Coffee Shop Talks, it's a playlist, and you'll enjoy and you'll feel like uh, it's valuable content. So, nice to meet you. <laughs> Last but not least tonight, Oop. So hey everybody, my name is Dara Shire and I am the founder and CEO of Boop. Uh, but before I get into all that, quick question for the audience. How many of you have moved in the last year? Okay, and how many of you have moved, let's say, at least four times in your life? Okay, a lot of you. <laughs> so, it's pretty exciting for the most part, right? 
you get a new neighborhood, you get new neighbors, maybe you got a new job or a new roommate or a new partner. But then the honeymoon period ends. And one Saturday afternoon, shortly after you've gotten that new set of keys in your hands, you wind up here. <laughs> Abandon all hope you enter in Ikea on the weekend. I don't have to tell you guys about it. We have all experienced the frustration that is shopping here. But the fact of the matter is you need furniture for your new place. And I'm not talking about like heirloom furniture from your, you know, your great grandmother. I'm talking about inexpensive but visually appealing stuff that's gonna last you until the next time you move. So you brave the maze that's Ikea, you buy something, but your troubles aren't over yet. Because you gotta put that sucker together. <laughs> and it's gonna be hard, and it's gonna require tools. And chances are you're gonna be missing a piece or two along the way. It's gonna be heavy as hell, so good luck if you have stairs. It might sometimes smell like chemicals, which is gonna make you wonder, what the heck is this thing made out of anyway? And lastly, when you inevitably move and determine that this piece is just not worth taking with you, you'll throw it out, and it's gonna go straight to the landfill along with the other 9.8 million tons of furniture that America can't recycle every single year. Hmm. But guys, what if there was a better way to buy temporary furniture? Woo! Yeah. And what if we could solve all the problems that I just talked about simply by changing the material that the furniture was made out of? Well, that is what my company, Boop, which stands for Built Out of Paper, is doing. We are making cardboard, yes, cardboard furniture. Yeah. Now, I know this might sound a little crazy at first, but consider that cardboard is a way cooler material than just the Amazon box that you get in the mail every week. So because of corrugated cardboard's unique structure, it's both incredibly strong and very lightweight. Cardboard is sustainably sourced and it's still made in the US. And not only is it made from recycled materials, but it's biodegradable and 100% recyclable. And actually, cardboard is the number one most recycled item in the US. So now that you guys know a little bit more about cardboard, let me introduce you to Boop's premier product, our strong and multifunctional bookcase. Wow, well, it's cardboard. Yeah. So Boop's cardboard bookcase is super easy. It's delivered for free to your doorstep, and it goes together in minutes with no tools or nails needed. Um, as you can see, it is really lightweight. It weighs less than nine pounds, so you can easily move it around or bring it up the stairs if you want to. The Boop bookcase is really strong. Each shelf can hold up to 25 pounds, and although we don't recommend like taking a super soaker to it or anything, the top does have a moisture barrier in case you're the kind of person who forgets a coaster now and then. And most importantly, Boop is a greener way to buy temporary furniture. So keep your Boop bookcase for as long as you need it, and then when you move, simply recycle it in your normal, normal paper recycling bin. Plus, all of Boop's products are made locally right here in Georgia. So uh, we did a little bit of a soft launch on selling the Boop bookcase, our very first product. Um, we're selling it exclusively in Atlanta right now. So, and the support has been absolutely tremendous from the Atlanta community, which is amazing. So I would love for you guys to be part of this early Boop community, so definitely think about buying one of these. And to sweeten the deal, if you enter code ATV, you'll get 10% off. So what's next for Boop? Well, we are definitely not just bookcases. We've got designs in the works for dressers, tables, stools, artwork. And basically, if you can name it, we'll build it out of paper. Woo! All the way in the back. The question was, do you have to put it together? 
So you do have to put it together. However, it is way faster and easier than like an Ikea piece. There's no tools needed, just a series of folds. Um, so, I mean, I'm a little seasoned at this, but it takes me about like a minute and a half to put this together. Um, the instructional video is two minutes and 30 seconds long. Yes. The question was, can you paint it or does it come in different colors? So the future of boob is many, many colors. Like the coolest part about paper is that you can print on it. Um, so we can make this stuff look like anything we want, which is incredible. I mean, we could put like glitter and foil on this if we wanted to. Um, so very soon uh, there will be many different colors, patterns, things like that. Uh, it's basically because we're manufacturing them at a, in a different way at a much smaller scale right now, color is more difficult, but yes, colors are coming real soon. What's the weight? What is the weight of the total thing? Oh, sure. So each shelf can hold 25 pounds. Uh, the bottom shelf can obviously hold as much as you want. <laughs> yes. What's the cost? So the question was, what's the cost? So right now, uh, the bookcase is going for $49 free shipping. Um, so basically, the goal is to keep everything comparable. Love these things. Okay, sorry, the question was, he has cats. Is it cat proof? Okay, I don't know, maybe you have some like really wild cat, but I've actually brought this over to people's houses to do different photo shoots and stuff, and their cat kind of just curls up in the bottom. There's pictures on Instagram of this. It's really cute. Um, so I recommend if you have a cat and you buy one, maybe leave the bottom shelf empty and your cat can like. <laughs> yes, what is the durability of it? about how long would that last? Sure, so the question was, what is the durability? How long will it last? It'll basically last as long as you want it to last. I mean, if, think of it a piece of Ikea furniture. If you don't abuse it, if it's not in like a frat house or something, it'll, <laughs> it'll basically just sit there until you decide to move it or take it apart and, and then it's done for. Um, so this will kind of sit here until you're ready to move or take it apart and instead of you know, taking it apart and tossing it in the garbage, you're putting it in your recycling bin. Uh, in the furniture business, inventory is a big risk. How do you manage all the inventory? Are you on demand or based on bulk? Yeah, so this is a cool question. Um, so he said the furniture industry uh, inventory is a really big issue. So how are we managing inventory? So the really cool part about making stuff out of cardboard is that it's not quite just in time manufacturing, but it's pretty darn close. Um, we can basically produce 10,000 of these in less than a day if we wanted to. Um, it's just all done in line and it's turned out. And um, so inventory is actually much less of an issue for food. So his question was, is it, do I manufacture with a third party supplier or is it in-house? So what's awesome about this industry is that it still exists throughout the United States. So all of the infrastructure to do this is in every state, um, in, in tons of cities. So really all I need to do is contract with um, a third party manufacturer to uh, make my bookcases wherever I want. All the way in the back. The question was, have I secured any seed round investments yet? So uh, I've been fortunate enough to win a few contests and then con subsequently convinced the judges at the contest to give me some money. Um, <laughs> So uh, basically I raised a really small seed round just to get off the ground, start making products, start getting the word out, um, but very soon I'll be raising a true seed round.
pretty fantastic wrap to tonight. So if you want to come up and like touch the cardboard bookcase, which I did the first time I saw it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Follow us online on Meetup. Uh, see you next month, last Monday in April. Have a good night. Do you have stylus that are part of your platform, or is it all algorithm? Uh, we do have stylus initially to so start and help put together the outfits, and then they'll come through very seasonal changes that can come in with the recommendations for spring and summer and stuff in the future. You begin with the stylus and are training, training the AI? Yeah, they're the ones that are training the AI. And do they get replaced or people actually want to have a personal stylus help them? Um, the goal is to have an on-demand also stylus part of your subscription. So you can have someone, hopefully as an influencer you follow, go into your personal order and recommend stuff specific to you, but they, um, they, they style in general to help guests teach them. Uh -huh. Cool. Good luck with it. Yes, thank you. I was surprised. I was surprised to see every woman's hand go up. I just I had no idea. What, what a That's problem. why we're targeting women. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it was good to hear that there were multiple men in the audience that are also. Well, the way it works today was classic for me. Yeah. I got dressed. I go to kiss my wife goodbye. She says, "No, that sweater does not go with that." Well, she, she settled because she said I still didn't have the right palette of stuff going together. But, uh, I wasn't worth any more investment than time for style. Well, there you go. You can use the app. You get for more free time. You invest in the technology and software and all that. This is called the Nevo Plus. In, in fact, let me off here. Just take me a second. Essentially a microphone. This is a microphone.